Hello everyone. Today in Dermatology Lectures, I'm going to talk about rosacea. Please subscribe to my channel. If you're watching my video for the first time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for the notifications. Rosacea is a chronic inflammatory rash involving skin of the central face that most often starts between the ages of 30 and 60 years. A tendency to flush easily is followed by persistent redness on the cheeks, chin, forehead, and nose, and by crops of small inflamed red bumps and pus spots. It is common in those with fair skin, blue eyes, and celtic origin. It may be transient, recurrent, or persistent, and is characterized by its color red. Although once known as acne rosacea, this is incorrect as it is not related to acne. Rosacea starts with a tendency to blush and flush easily. The skin of the face feels sensitive and can burn or sting. After some time, the central areas of the face become a deeper shade of red and end up staying this color all the time. A red face due to persistent redness or prominent blood vessels at telangiectasia is the first stage of rosacea, which is known as erythematotelangiectatic rosacea. Rosacea can further lead to embarrassment, anxiety or depression, and a di disrupted social life. Rosacea results in red spots, papules, and sometimes pustules, which is next stage of rosacea known as inflammatory or papulopustular rosacea. They are dome-shaped rather than pointed, and unlike acne, there are no blackheads, whiteheads, or nodules. There are papules and pustules on the nose, forehead, cheeks, and chin, rarely involve the trunk and upper limbs. The area becomes studded with uh, small red bumps, that is papules, and pus spots, which come and go in crops. Telangiectasia can also be seen as thin red streaks. The face can sometimes swell, especially around the eyes. Some people with rosacea may have eye symptoms, that is red, itchy, sore eyes, sensitive to light. A few patients with rosacea have more serious eye problems, such as rosacea keratitis, that can interfere with the vision. There are red, sore, or gritty eyelid margins, including papules and styes, posterior phlebritis, and sore or tired eyes, conjunctivitis, keratitis, and apicicleritis, which is known as ocular rosacea. The nose may grow big, red, and bulbous due to sebaceous hyperplasia. This is more common in men than women. Enlarged, unshapely nose with prominent pores and fibrous thickening. This condition is, it is called rhinophyma. Other symptoms include dry and flaky facial skin, aggravated by sun exposure and hot and spicy food or drink, anything that reddens the face. The skin is sensitive with burning and stinging, especially in reaction to makeup, sunscreens and other facial creams. There can be persistent redness and swelling or solid edema of the upper face due to lymphatic obstruction, which is a rare entity characterized clinically by chronic erythematous edema localized exclusively on the forehead, glabula, eyelids, and cheeks, is known as Morbihan syndrome. It is considered a clinical variety or a complication of rosacea. There can be persistent yellow brown papules and nodules due to granulomatous rosacea. The main cause of rosacea is not known yet, but the defect is found in the blood vessels in the skin of the face, which dilate too easily. Many of the things tries to make rosacea worse, but probably do not cause the rosacea at the first place. There are several theories regarding the cause of rosacea, including genetic, environmental, vascular, and inflammatory factors. The skin's innate immune response appears to be important as high concentrations of antimicrobial peptides, such as catholicidines, that are part of skin's normal defense against microbes,
have been observed in rosacea. Cathelicidins promote infiltration of neutrophils into the dermis, promoting vasodilation, causing edema, and pro-inflammatory cytokines leak into the dermis, increasing the inflammation. The main group of enzymes responsible for the collagen and other protein degradation in extracellular matrix are matrix metalloproteinases, such as collagenase and elastase, also appear important in rosacea. These enzymes remodel normal tissue and help in wound healing and angiogenesis. In rosacea, they are in higher concentration and may contribute to cutaneous inflammation and thickened, hardened skin. Demodex folliculorum are sometimes observed within rosacea papules, but their role is unclear. An increased incidence of rosacea has been reported in those who carry the stomach bacterium H. pylori. There are many aggravating factors which include sunlight, too much exercises, hot and spicy food, both high and low temperatures, and stress. Rosacea may be aggravated by facial creams or oils, and especially by topical steroids. There are no diagnostic laboratory tests available for this disease. Rosacea differs from acne in that the skin is not extra greasy. Blackheads and scarring are not the features of rosacea. Flushing is common and there is a background of red skin. In most cases, no investigations are required and the diagnosis of rosacea is made clinically. Occasionally, a skin biopsy is performed which shows chronic inflammation and vascular changes. Rosacea may occasionally be confused or accompanied by other facial rashes, uh, which includes acne vulgaris, steroid rosacea, perioral dermatitis or periocular dermatitis, dermoticosis, flushing due to other causes, keratosis, pilaris atrophicans fasciae, skin aging, rosacea fulminans, seborrheic dermatitis, irritant contact dermatitis, systemic lupus erythematosus, dermatomyositis. There is no treatment available that can give guarantee to switch off rosacea forever. Although long-term treatments can control symptoms and clear the spots, treatment works best if started when rosacea is at an early stage. General measures include reducing factors causing facial flushing, avoiding oil-based facial creams, using water-based makeup. Never apply a topical steroid to the rosacea as although short-term improvements may be observed but it makes the rosacea more severe over the next weeks. Using light oil-free facial sunscreens and protecting from the sunlight. Patients should minimize the exposure to hot and spicy foods, alcohol, hot showers and baths, and warm rooms. Topical treatment for rosacea include metronidazole creams or gels for mild inflammatory rosacea and in combination with oral antibiotics for more severe cases. Azelic acid cream or lotion is also effective for mild inflammatory rosacea applied twice daily to affected areas. Brimonidine gel or cream reduce facial redness temporarily. Ivermectin cream can be used in the treatment of papillopustular rosacea. It controls demodex mites and is an anti-inflammatory. Oral antibiotics for rosacea include tetracycline like doxycycline and minocycline are commonly used to treat rosacea. They reduce the redness, papules, pustules, and eye symptoms. The antibiotics are usually prescribed for 6 to 12 weeks with the duration and dose depending on the severity of the patient. For resistant cases, other oral antibiotics such as uh, cotrimoxazole or metronidazole are prescribed. The effective dose of tetracyclines in rosacea is lower than that to require to kill the bacteria, so they are not working through their antimicrobial function. Long-term antibiotics can lead to bacterial resistance. So low doses that do not have antimicrobial effects are preferable, for example, 40 to 50 milligrams of toxicycline daily. 
When antibiotics are ineffective or poorly tolerated, oral isotretinoin may be very effective. Certain medications such as clonidine and carvedilol may reduce the flushing. Side effects may include low blood pressure, GI symptoms, dry eyes, blurred veins, and low heart rate. Calcineurin inhibitors such as tacrolimus ointment and primacrolimus cream can help some patients with rosacea. Persistent telangiectasia can successfully improved with vascular or intense pulsed, uh, pulse light treatment, cautery or diathermy. Papulopustular rosacea may also improve with laser treatment or radiofrequency. Rhinophyma can be treated successfully by reshaping the nose surgically or with carbon dioxide laser. This is all for today. Thank you everyone. Kindly subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for the notifications. Keep watching Skin Doctor for you.